Hey everyone, welcome back for another good tutorial. This one we're going to be taking a look at writing information to the file system. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at text files. Now, some of the previous videos, um, we're taking a look at INI files, the initialization files, which are great to use. Uh, text files, they can be larger, and text files, you can have, I think, up to about 32 of them open at once. And so they're a little bit more versatile. Uh, the commands, pretty simple but there are a few little pitfalls things you have to watch out for and you have to be a little bit more planned when you're using text files just because of the way it writes and saves the data to them so let's get right to it uh, this is gonna be the first of a couple videos I'm gonna be looking at these ones here simple save and simple load remember these projects are available on the website right so you can have the code let's go look at simple save and write to a text file so you'll see here this is all the code for this writing and GameMaker has a script called File Text Open Write, which basically opens a text file for writing. You give it Working Directory Plus, you name your file, okay, test.txt, and this script will send you back a number. If all goes well, you get a number back, an ID for this file. So maybe it sends you back 176, maybe it sends you back 302. If something goes wrong, though, it's going to send you back negative 1. So you'll see here, I do a little check. If this file ID variable equals negative 1, something was up with the file system. It didn't work. Good programmer should always take care of that. I didn't really do much here other than show a message. But, you know, you'd have your handling code there. Now, assuming everything went okay, you'll skip this chunk of code, and we'll get to the writing. There's basically two or three write commands that we use with text files. One of them is file text write real. This is for writing numbers. So you'll see here, you give it the ID of the file number, and then you give it the value you want to write. And when you're using write real, it is expecting a number. So I'm writing number 99. Then I'm writing another real number to that file ID, 789. Then I'm going to write a string. You'll see it's a string command there. I write the word hello in quotes. I write another number. I write another string. And always close the file when you're done with it. Okay, You don't want to leave these files left open there. Okay, Be neat and tidy. Now, what's the result of running this code? Let's go take a look. It should be 99789 hello 123 by. Here it is saved inside of test. And that's the overall result. Now, things to note here that are important. When I use this command, whoops, when I use this command here that says write real, it writes the 99. And then you'll see when I go to write the next number, it leaves a space and then writes 789. Now, what's interesting here is it's written it on the same line. This is just the way, sorry, this is just the way this command works. I never told it to write to a new line. So it just keeps on writing on the same line when you use write real and write string. Okay, so you'll see how this just sort of blends together. You'll notice after you write numbers, it does leave a space. And when you write after a string, there is no space. So you'll see the numbers side by side. This is important to note because when you go to read this file later on, you have to know the format that the file was written in. I mean, obviously, if you try to read it and you're trying to read stuff in chunks and you don't know the format that it's been written in, the read gets impossible. That's where you have to be organized when you use these write and read commands. Now, that's what that looks like. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this up a bit. So let me just close this one and I'm going to throw some other commands in there. So instead of write real, write real, let me throw in a line in between here. This one's file, text, write, line. And you can probably guess what write line does. Oh, it wants the file to write to, so file ID. It'll just write basically the enter key, a carriage return, a new line command in the file. So let's give this one a little write here. So my file is called simple save. I know that my button save right now is set up to run simple save, so that's good. Let's give it a run, and then I'll reopen that text file, and we'll take a look what it looks like. So save. And let's go open up my test.txt. Uh, for those that didn't watch the other videos, 
Game Maker on Windows is always saving your stuff into your local user, app data, local, your project name, and then in there you get your text files and your I and I files. And let's see test, and there it is. Now as you can see, this one is basically the same but different. This one has one line after the 99. So that was the right line command. So you can separate you know, onto new lines. Now you actually have to put that in there. Game Maker won't put that one in there automatically. So when you need to go to a new line, you go to a new line. Now you may ask, when do you have to go to a new line? Well, you'll see when we start to learn how to do the reading, you'll decide when it's a good time to have new lines. Now let's go back to that save script there. Hey, that's not save, 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 save. There we go. So there was my right line command there. Um, when I actually go to read this stuff, just let me take that right line out. Let me show you the load command. So the loading of the file, whoops, wrong place, simple load. The loading of the file is very similar. There's obviously a command to open the text file for reading. I should put working directory there. Even though it doesn't actually matter on Windows, it'll work either way. Okay, I see a lot of tutorials where you're supposed to have that in there. The same idea, if it's a negative one, we have an error, handle it. And now here's my reading of the file. Now, notice what I do here. I use file, text, read, real. You are supposed to know what you're reading. So if you're reading a number in, you should use read, real. Right? So again, know the format. Again, our format was pretty straightforward. Remember that originally, I'm just going to put it back to the original. Originally it was this, a number, a number, now a string, a number, a string. But watch what happens when I do this one. I read a number, I show it in the message box. The cursor after I do that read actually sits right there. It's read the number and sort of the read cursor is waiting. When it goes to read the next real number, it'll read that number, and the cursor is going to sit there. Now I go text read string. Now let's just see what this does and what it spits out. I mean, there's really two options here. It's either going to pick out the word hello, or it's going to pick out hello one, two, three, or maybe something else happens. So let's check it out. So here comes our load file. Tick, tick, tick. Let's load it. So there's that 99. There's a 789. And now here comes the read string command. And notice what it grabs out. When you're reading the reels and you're trying to read the numbers, it detects the space bar and it stops and it gives you that number. But when you use the read string command, well, this is all a string. It's all text, right? That space bar, that's really no different than the letter A, B, C, or X, Y, Z, right? It's a character. And so the whole rest of the line is considered a string when you use that read string. And so notice what you get. You just don't get the word hello. You get hello, one, two, three, bye, okay? So it's important that you know that that's gonna happen, you know, because you may have been expecting me maybe after reading a string to try to read a number and read a string, but obviously that wouldn't work in this case, right? So that's a nice one to keep in mind there, that read string pretty well just reads wherever you are, it's gonna read the rest of the line. So now that we got that point, let's change our save so that we can actually pick out those five pieces of information independently. So what I'd really like to have is maybe I'd like to have my text file look something like that. That could work. I could read a number, read a number, read a string. I could go to a new line, read a number, whoops, and read a string. Or I could do this idea where I could just maybe put everything on one separate line. Read a number, read a number, read a string, read a number, read a string and just go line by line, right? That way everything's separated nicely. So I'm gonna do this kind of idea. So let's test that out in our save. Now when I wanna do this one in my save, 
Let's go to simple save. Basically what I do is I have to keep doing this command underneath each one. So I'm just going to copy that and every time I write a number, I mean I could do that. That way everything is on its very own line. And once everything's on its very own line, when I actually go to read it with the simple load, all I have to do is change the way I write, right? So I've written, then I write a line, that's an enter key. So I go to a new line, I write, I go to a new line. I just keep doing that. Well, let's test that little save out. And it should give me a text file with everything on one line. So save, and then let's go back to the file and open up test. Everything on its very own line, that's pretty good. And then let's just modify the load quickly. And I've already hopped in there uh, and done that behind the scenes. But you can see now I read a real number and I do a show message. I read a number, I show a message, I read a string, show it, etc., etc. Trying to read all five things. But watch what the output is here. Because there's a little lesson to be learned is this isn't going to work like you think it works because there's one extra command we need to do. So when I try loading now, yeah, it gets a 99. It works for the number 789, but when we get to the string, it doesn't work. And then it doesn't work. And then it, ah, it's doing weird stuff, right? It's not quite working. So what was going on there that was breaking that? Well, basically, again, when we look at our file, is there's little secret characters at the end of every line. It's the new line, the enter key uh, characters. You know, you don't see them there, right? They're not symbols, but they are there. And that's causing a bit of a problem because going to a new line actually requires us to say go to a new line. Now, I know it worked with the numbers. So when a number is followed by a number, it works. But when a number is followed by a string or a number after a string, it doesn't work. So good practice is, is just to give the command to go to the new line when you're reading between every line and then you know you're not going to mess up. So here's how you fix this. I've added it here in simple load and here's been the fix. The command is file text read line. Now the name of this file is very, or sorry, the name of the script is very deceiving. It makes it sound like it's going to read a line and it does, but really it should say like read to end of line and go to the next line is a better command name for it. So now after I read that number in, the read line command that comes after actually brings the cursor back down to the start of the next line. Then I read another number, cursor back down to the start. Read a string, cursor back down to the start. Read a number, cursor down to the start. And this just continues and continues and I get my five values I'm showing them as I get them, and this should work just fine now with these read line commands in there. Okay, no surprises. So load, number, number, string, number, number. Okay, and it's done. Now, those are some of the good pitfalls to this. Um, it's nice to watch. That's your little intro video. I wouldn't stop here. I would watch the other few examples because there are some common things you'll want to do and maybe another pitfall or two to these, but that's at least the basics to get you started. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.